Welcome to I had no idea. In today's video we're going to take a look at the latest patch, I'm joking, that's already been done. In today's video I'm going to have live gameplay in tier 6, 8, maybe 9, 10 and we're going to make a list of what's good about World of Tanks and what's bad about World of Tanks. And at the end we're going to see which list is longer and I'm also going to make it weighted so not every item is the equal weight. For example balance is going to be much more important than graphics. So. Without any further ado, let me take you to some random live games. The positives start right in the garage, because look at the choices. This game allows you to really tailor your experience. Um, this is kind of uh, tied into the balance of the game, which is definitely not a strong uh, part of it. But let's think about it this way balance and balance issues I'm going to put on both good and bad and hear me out you get to decide if you'd like to be an underdog or maybe you'd like to be a powerhouse so you can tailor your experience in theory and I will touch up on this subject uh, later on for example if I wanted to be powerful and have a high impact, uh, or actually have a higher chance of having an impact, I would probably pick an M6 because it's a very powerful vehicle. I would even go as far and say overpowered. But if I wanted to have some more tactical gameplay, I would go for something like a Skoda T40, which I uh, plan to three mark soon. Or maybe I want to play something more sneaky, I'd go for a Crusader because it has high camouflage rating. There are many ways you can play the game and picking a powerful vehicle is not the only way to play it. Unfortunately, this doesn't always work because of the flaws of the game. For example, let's say I want to play a KV-2, so what do I expect to get? If I pick this tank, I make a decision that I would like to have a high alpha uh, damage shots, I want to have a high uh, impact, but am I going to get it? This is where things kind of fall apart. I press battle and I don't decide about anything else. So what do I get? Did I get lucky? I got lucky. I am a top tier vehicle now and I am going to have high impact if RNG doesn't uh, mess me up uh, a little too hard, but okay. So, as you can see, there are good and bad things about the uh, imbalance of the game. If I picked an M6 in this battle, I would most likely end up with a high caliber and I would do at least 20% of the enemy's uh, health pool as my own damage because it's just so powerful. If I picked a tank destroyer, I'd probably be quite unhappy because Berlin is not a great map uh, for tank destroyers. If I picked a light tank, I'd probably also be quite unhappy because there is not much you can do as a light tank playing for assistance. You'd have to focus more on doing damage. So the game gives you an impression of choice, but this is not a real choice. It uh, only pretends to be real. And this is my high biggest complaint about the game. The choice falls apart as soon as you get a map. The map can mess up anything. I got lucky because I picked a tank that can work on most maps. <laughs> and then the RNG blesses me with a shot on the move with armor piercing into the T-150. I'm going to side scrape here hoping for one more tank. And where is he going? He is... We don't know where he's going. Okay, maybe he'll turn. Well, let's wait and see. I'm not going to peek immediately. Uh, I want him to commit. I'm here just by myself, so... Need to be careful of that. I'll be playing the game and discuss uh, the good and the bad at the same time. And Churchill is not coming, so I'm going to peek here through the left window, so I expose myself as little as possible, and then the Churchill... Oh, that is my gun. I can't ban him really. Oh well, nothing I can do about that. So we have another 17 seconds to talk. What do you see is matchmaking. Tier 5 and 6 is what we got. And this is not always the case. Imagine if we got a tier 8 game. What can we do if we get a tier 8? Sherman is looking at me, I am not falling for that. 
Uh, I have enough gun depression to uh, kill that KV-1 SA if he pushes, but I need to be careful because uh, KV-222 is on the bridge. We should be able to take him out. Uh, I could go for him, but that Sherman is still looking. What a boring gameplay. What do I do? What do I do? I could reload high explosive, but then do I want to do I want to peek? They have such high DPM, it's almost pointless of me of going. I'm just not going to go. I don't have to go. That's the thing. Although the game's over. Ah, six to one. No, oh, that. Why not talk about six to one, right? It is a problem after all. Do, 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 do. Click. So two clicks and one thousand one hundred damage. This is what KV two can do if it gets into the correct. Um, matchmaker, right? Because this is all uh, boiling down to what do you get from the matchmaker, right? You might as well get a tier 8 game and you're going to be forced to shoot high explosive and do like 100 uh, damage shots and you're not going to have this much fun. So you are very reliant on the grace of the matchmaker. It's not that was overkill. <laughs> uh, this isn't entirely up to you what kind of fun uh, you are going to get. And it's a big problem because I don't like to play meta tanks. I don't like to play cool down fast heavies uh, with armor because I find them very boring. And this is my biggest concern and something that is not only, not only it's not being addressed, it's also being incorporated into the game on purpose so it's the game design uh, that is a problem here because he's pushing me over a nice guy uh, because imagine this if you look at the latest changes on the maps wargaming is introducing more hold down positions where there was no hold down positions before look what they've done to stojanki map They've just massacred it, making it another cool down map where you have to commit to one play and that's your play for the rest of the game. It's terrible. Uh, so maps definitely going on the negative side of things. Uh, but what can you do? Uh, if you want to have a higher chance of having fun, because it's all about having fun, right? So if I get Panther 2, which I wanted to 3 mark, but it's painful, so what can you do instead? If like if I pick, pick, what are my chances of having fun if I pick this tank? I can have fun if I get let's say Prohorovka, Malinovka, Redshire. Am I going to have fun if I get Himmelsdorf? Am I going to have fun if I get Ensk? Probably not. So what is the game almost forcing me to do? If I'm coming back after work tired, what do I do? I pick a tank that has a higher chance of providing me fun. So you need to pick a tank that is going to be suitable for most maps. So this is all boiling down to maps yet again. Sure, the balancing is a problem because this is, of course, this is a tier 9 vehicle disguised as a tier 8. Uh, what we got is another lucky matchmaking. We have tier 7, tier 8, although this tank doesn't really care about the matchmaker. <laughs> so imagine this. Another thing is imbalance between tiers. Tier 7 in this scenario is at such a massive disadvantage. Look at this. There's only one light tank per side on this um, in this game, and it's a tier 7 light tank. I have CVS on my Borask. T71DA cannot carry CVS. So I am effectively a better light tank here than he is, even though I am not a light tank at all. <laughs> How crazy is that? So I've decided to play this uh, role for no apparent reason. I just don't like this map. Maps, maps, maps. It's all about the maps, right? Uh, I have enough view range to spot the Super Hellcat at a distance. This is like 400 something meters. How many? LTG, uh, SDG 345. I can easily outspot them all. But do I have shots? Guys, playing light tanks. 
it's not just about spotting. You always have to make sure that if you are spotting, somebody's shooting. So what we have here is a CS44. I think he just tried to blind shoot me. I respect that. And I think I have to go. There is not much left for me to do here. Uh, the enemy light tank still not spotted. He's in a platoon with, uh, with a TD. So they are going to most likely try and do some more. Some, some plays at some point, but it's hard to say uh, what kind of plays. Do I go for the heavy line? Uh, probably not. Uh, I could be a nuisance there if I wanted to, but this is not the more right moment to make the play. But it's not about this game, it's about the game overall. So we have imbalance uh, in, in tiers. That is hurting the enjoyment. Imagine how tier sevens feel when I get when they get into a situation like this. It's terrible. It's really it makes you want to quit. Uh, same goes for tier fives. You just started the game. You've played a little. You got yourself your first tier five tank, and you think to yourself, "Oh, this is starting to get interesting. I'm going to get better now, and I'm going to have more fun now." Right? Wrong. You are going to be met with Hummel. M44 uh, on tier, tier 6 artilleries that shoot so often you don't even have time to properly react. It is disgusting uh, how this game is balanced when it comes to the uh, support uh, side, side of it. It's just not fun to be on the receiving end of things. Okay, but we need to focus on the game if we want to have a score. I got unlucky with my crossing. But my camouflage holds and Juto did not spot me. I'm going to put two shots into him and then I'm going to leave. Unless I see a more powerful target, then I'm going to eliminate him. Okay, focus on removing the guns. Bad shot here. CS, good player, didn't shoot me. And one T71. Okay, let's go on the reload. I think we got this. Uh, the enemy pushed in where they shouldn't. And we have CS trying to come for us. We are going to get one shot into us, but we are going to give two shots in return. And by the time he makes a decision to come for us, we are going to be reloaded. How disgusting is that, right? Eight, seven, six, five. So, what else can I tell you about World of Tanks? Well, it is very unfriendly towards new players. The game has become way too fast, and I mean really, really disgustingly fast. And it's mostly because of the ease of grind now. This was always a grindy game. It used to take a long, long time for you to get to tier 10. So. It, was, it has always been seen as a negative. How did you lose that? It has always been seen as a negative uh, because it was just time consuming. And people with premium accounts had an advantage, right? Yeah, so what happened is they made the grind shorter and easier because of all the times five missions. Time uh, five blueprints. Oh, blueprints. I wish they weren't in the game really because you get to skip the game now. How crazy is that? That this is a part, a, a, almost a core of the game. Uh, that you skip uh, gameplay. Uh, that doesn't make any sense, really. Why are you allowed to skip tiers? It's pointless. The whole game used to make it worth staying lower down because you could, you know, learn the game a little. Before you get to tier 10, you had a chance to practice, to get better. Nowadays, you don't get to have a practice because you get to tier, tier 10 so fast, you end up with your teammates not knowing what they're doing. Imagine this, you pick your tier eight uh, tank and in tier 10s, let's say there's three tier 10s in your matchup and they have no idea what they're doing. How much fun are you going to have as a tier 8, if your top tiers are clueless. This is killing the fun, really, because we have allowed 
unskilled players into high tiers. And it's making the game unpleasant for everyone. I'm not saying there used to be a higher skill uh, level of players in the game, that's not true. Uh, the game has always been populated by people who normally don't play video games, so uh, that, that's the tricky, the tricky part, because I have friends whose fathers are playing this game. I don't know any other game uh, that uh, draws attention from so many um, people who normally don't play games. And honestly, I think this is great. Uh, and I see this as a perk. Uh, what, what the, what's the problem here is that they used to spend more time in lower tiers uh, just so they can get better at the game uh, before they um, reach... That's some camo for <laughs> there. <laughs> Uh, before they can uh, reach higher tiers, they spend a lot of time in tier 6. And when you spend so much time in lower tiers, you get to get used to that tier, and you might decide to stay there. Imagine how many people were playing tier 6 back in the day. It was the fun tier to play, because there wasn't this push towards tier 10 all the time. Many people were finding tier 6 uh, a golden place where you can just, uh, you know, enjoy yourself, have some fun. And honestly, I don't know why we've let that go. I think it was a good, good uh, place to be for, for World of Tanks back then. You wanted to be serious, you played your 9-10, you wanted to have fun, uh, you know, without uh, much care, you were playing tier 6, and you wanted to grind credits, you were playing tier 8. That was pretty much the logic of the game. What's happening now is, because of blueprints and times 5 missions, we're just skipping tiers, and we're getting to tier 10 immediately without an, any sort of uh, time spent in lower tiers. That makes the game very fast, because people just press play, go to the next game, press play, go to the next game. And that brings me onto the Battle Pass. Battle Pass ruined World of Tanks for me, because first of all, you get the fear of missing out, which is a toxic uh, mindset, really. It makes you think that if you don't play, you're not going to get the rewards that others are going to get, and maybe there's this bounty equipment that you can get for free, and you're going to miss it because you're not participating in the battle pass. It's a very toxic mechanic, and I wish it wasn't in the game. It's just bad overall. It's good for business because uh, you spend gold uh, to get the second tier of it, and I'm sure many people uh, play it just to get through it. So you find people caring less. And when people don't care, you have many heartbreaks. When you die, you, you work your ass off to get the best possible result. And what you get in return, you get teammates who just do not care at all. It's insane. And it's just not nice. When you try your best, uh, to do a good job, and your teammates just don't. I got spotted there, I'm lucky. <laughs> I take that though. So basically, what I, what I did here is I have 48% camouflage. I didn't expect to get spotted there, uh, even with CVS, but hmm, okay. So, this is it. Teammates who don't care. Big, big problem, honestly, because... I always give it my best, even when I'm just playing for fun, I always try and uh, give my best. It doesn't hurt me uh, to, to, give, to do my best, right? It's not like it costs me something to try a little harder. After all, even, even when I play for fun, I want to have a result, I want to have a score. So, to me, it's logical. Maybe it's not logical to everyone, but uh, this is how I see things. I'm just sort of coming in again. Okay, it looks like I have an upper hand uh, when it comes to spotting here. Mm, I'm gonna be a little cheeky here. Might end my game prematurely, but I hope it won't. Ah, I'm spotted now, okay. Uh, Gisor has a decent gun, so those shots have a chance of hitting. Just see how passive they are. I know it's early in the morning, but guys, come on. 
You play the game a little. Better dodge that. Hey, he's got he's got good view range. He's playing this this tank. Uh, it, you know what that tells me? That tells me he's a very good player because it's not easy to have this tank maxed out. And he keeps coming back for more. Oh. <laughs> STRV crossing. That was a lot of shooting for not a lot of damage. Okay, he's down to a one shot, and now he's dead. Okay, now I can play the game. Uh, Conway, Gorilla still unspotted. I expect him to be in the typical tank destroyer positions. So this is straightforward gameplay now. And I can focus more a bit about the game itself. So, what do you get if you play light tanks? Well, you are really... Well, I can't curse, I don't want to curse here, but I love playing light tanks and I honestly can't play light tanks because every time I want to have fun, I take a class that is immediately at a disadvantage because what? how many maps does World of Tank have? 20? You end up... Um, you end up with five good maps for light tanks, and the rest you can only make work. Uh, so the problem you're facing is not that there are no... Uh, you can't do much, you're, you end up in a situation where you, you are at a disadvantage by default. I'm risking my life here. At a massive disadvantage by default. What it means is that if you pick a light tank, you have a higher chance of having trouble. You have less chance of having fun. And I want to have fun in my light tanks. I want to do well in my light tanks, but it's just more, it's just harder to do. Uh, you have a class in the game that is actively performing worse than any other class. What's the point of that class then? Why don't I just play medium tanks with CVS? If I wanted to have uh, some spotting, I could just take uh, a fast, uh, high camo medium and do a similar role. And at the same time, at least I have DPM and a good penetration, right? So the choice of classes in World of Tanks, uh, when it comes to the fun factor, is fake. It doesn't exist. It's not, you can't say that you pick a tank and you are going to have fun you are going to have to choose a tank that has a higher chance of having fun. And this is a very flawed design, honestly. The, the whole idea of World of Tanks giving you a choice of 500, 600 tanks is so you can choose from the things you, you want to. You, you're not supposed to be limited uh, with your choices, right? But this is exactly the situation we have right now in World of Tanks, where if you want to have fun, you have to pick one of the fun tanks, otherwise you are not going to enjoy yourself. That's a small gun, but he can still one-shoot me. That's high DPM then. He's going for me. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> well, never mind. I'm still happy with the result. 4,000 on this map is good enough. So what I was saying, you are limited by what Matchmaker gives you. And the maps are a massive problem in World of Tanks. They're just not good. They're, they've been dumbed down and by design as well. So it's not like it's a bug. <laughs> it's just that this game has been designed to be simple, but it's complex. World of Tanks is one of the most complicated games I have ever played. If you want to play World of Tanks well, well, you better know your game, because this is not an easy one to play. Uh, I've been playing the E4 lately, had a nice 8000 game yesterday, so I expect the same result today. See, this is the logic that I'm trying to uh, incorporate. So if I pick a tank, I expect something. I pick a tank which has massive penetration on the APCR shell, big alpha damage, it has some armor, but not too much. So when I pick this tank, I have expectations of high damage. Is that going to happen? This is down to RNG, so um, you don't always get what you pick. Uh, this is a problem, but back to what I was saying. 
game gives you uh, false choices that don't really uh, matter. And if you want to perform, you are, your choices are limited. So there, is, there are good tanks and there are bad tanks. Not just underdogs which can perform. You are down on the mercy of the RNG of the matchmaker. It could be your teammates, it could be the map that you get, could be your uh, aim RNG, that your shots don't go where you aim. You can mitigate that with equipment, but in the end it's always down to luck. And it's by design. One of the biggest problems, in, it's, you can't even complain about that, because once you press battle, you agree to the terms of the game, and the game is, has been designed this way. Uh, so it's not like Super Conqueror there. So it's not like um, we don't know about this. This game has been simplified for the sake of people uh, not having to learn. And honestly, it hurts me because it is one of the best games I've ever played. It is my favorite online game, that's for sure. Um, no gun depression. It's my cupola. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, that's Gorilla, right? And what does that explosion? Was that an AP show from RT? I'm risking it unnecessarily here. He's shooting heat, so if I raise my gun up, I can block his heat show with my gun. Cool mechanic! And honestly, uh, mechanics are amazing in this game. If you, if you really uh, want to learn it, you can have great results. Is he going? Okay. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, he can out DPM me now. How did you track me with heat and pent my side? They changed this um, some time ago that now uh, heat goes through tracks to ruin the whole idea. See, all of those changes have been made for the sake of simplifying the gameplay. So can we say that it's bad? It's by design. Like We accept the terms when we press play. Really annoying that uh, they've decided to go this way. But what can you do, right? Why did you go forward? Oh. People. See, I don't mind people being uh, unskilled. Uh, the problem is they have been allowed to skip uh, through so many tears without learning. So. Not much we can do about it. What else I can tell you? So, tier 10, the ultimate tier, right? <laughs> not really, the game was always about the choice and it is not anymore. So what we have so far is the, limit, the limited nature of the maps, that they have been dumped down, the game has been sped up, um, every tank is going 50 kilometers an hour nowadays, you can have a tortoise uh, that is just too fast uh, for its original purpose. I remember when I played T95, it used to go, I think, 13 kilometers an hour, and I've grinded through that whole tank this way. Now you can zoom around like crazy. And I don't like that, really. In my humble opinion, disagree with me in the comments if you wish, I liked the game when it was slower. That allowed people of, uh, that are not as skilled and uh, don't have good reflexes to be more competitive. Nowadays, you have to be better with your mouse and keyboard uh, to, because you need to react fast uh, to what's happening on the screen. 
this is not good for the game, I think. This AMX is really going ham, so I'm going to change my direction. That was pretty much suicide. And now the question is, is there a light tank here? I think I would, I would be spotted if there was. That's a miss. Okay, no light tank. That means our guys have been... Oh my. This is interesting. Oh, though. See, this is what Battle Pass does. People just go from one game to another without any consideration uh, of anything. They just need the next win. So they just spam battle, battle, battle all the time until they get the, the battle pass points. Battle pass is the toxic uh, mechanic, that mechanic. It's a toxic system really that has no place in a game like this in my opinion. I just, I'm so disappointed it's there. Not only you have this fear of missing out, but you also have uh, this kind of rushed gameplay where everyone... See, we only have one life in World of Tanks and people used to care about this one life. Uh, people were more careful. Nowadays, you just go to the next game and nobody cares. And the fact that nobody cares hurts me deeply because I always uh, try to give it my best and unfortunately doesn't matter anymore because if you are the only person in your team giving it your best then you are at a, you're at a disadvantage and um, you have less fun uh, this way that was bad timing right <laughs> this is my problem imagine this I'm doing my best drive around shoot relocate try to spot try to do damage and everything I die uh, and then I look around and I see that People are AFK, people just do nothing, uh, or people just die before I even get to position because they just want to be in the next game. They don't even think about this one, they already think about the next one. So there is a massive lack um, of caring uh, in this game. The player base is, is really in a bad, bad position. I was hoping to get him tracked, but that didn't quite work. Unfortunate. So what can I do in this game? 5 to 1, 6,000 hit point difference, uh, one flank uh, pretty much lost, uh, hill is being lost, uh, the enemy pushed in very hard, we had a, a suicide of a light tank, uh, the other light tank got, I think, blind shot by the, uh, by the gorilla high explosive, there's not much uh, we can do really, so what, do I go for damage, do I, because, see these guys, they don't even notice, they got to tier 10 so fast, they forgot to learn the basics. It's unfortunate, but hey, this is the game we have, right? Object and hold down meta. Oh, another object hold down. What can you do? All they have to do is just thin down the heavies that are remaining on the on top of the hill, and we are dead. It's just it's been decided for us very early that we are not going to win this battle. We could potentially um, have a good result, but is it going to be fun? That's the biggest problem. Fun is often directly linked to result. So what we're trying to do here is not just have a good score, but also have a good game. Uh, I can easily have a good score with this tank because it's a, it's a high perform, highly uh, performing vehicle. Uh, good alpha, good accuracy, good penetration. It just does well in every scenario, right? But it's not just about score. I want to have impact, I want to have fun, and the game is not making it easy. I'm going to wait for my shell to reload before I fire, and that's now. And we are being stormed from behind. There is so little we can do. IS-7 cooldown also, not much we can do about him. Uh, could hit the driver's position, the driver's hatch of the uh, 60 TP, but this is it. This is uh, the game. So I'm going to try and focus on my last, my final stand here. 
I'll go closer so I can spot the object. Mm. Come on, object, get spotted. Invisible heavies, and there he goes. I'm going to make every shot count because those are my last shells. Unfortunate, but this is the reality. Oh, that's not where I aimed. Now Bizek is going to spot me, and this is my uh, death. Oh, come on, RNG. <laughs> this is it. I think this, is, this summarizes uh, my prior points quite well. Uh, that's the situation we have right now. You can have a good game, uh, but that doesn't make this, the game fun. That's my problem with World of Tanks. Guys, thank you for watching and let's discuss what I said in the comments and this is the list. Thank you for watching today's video. If you like this one, I'm sure you'll like one of these two as well. And if you've already seen them all, stay tuned for another one. We always do our best to make sure that we release at least four videos every month, so there's always something to look out for. In the meantime, I'll see you on the battlefield.